Welcome back everyone, time to do another Apple Watch comparison between the newly released Apple Watch SE and the somewhat older Apple Watch Series 4. Now the Series 4, this one specifically, is my main watch that I use on an everyday basis and it's been working for me really really well. I don't have any issues with it besides I can't hold it right and it's been a fantastic watch if I'm being completely honest. Really whatever I do with it, I increase the brightness. Whatever I've done with it, it's been extremely good. It's probably one of the fastest Apple Watches I've ever used. I did do a comparison between the Series 4 and the Series 6 not too long ago, and I'll probably reiterate a lot of the same things in this video too, because, because these watches are just so similar that there's probably more similarities and differences if I'm being completely honest, but definitely in the Series 4, I enjoy this watch a lot. But the Apple Watch SC on the other hand is the newest watch that Apple made, and you can actually pick one of these things up for $279, which is actually a really good price for the base model. Now, I do have the 44mm Apple Watch Series 4 and the 40mm one, so you can kind of get an idea of the sizes. Now, with the SE, it's a little bit more expensive than a used Apple Watch Series 4, but it's still cheaper than a brand new Series 4, so keep that in mind. And there's about two years in difference between both these watches. So this thing came out in 2018, the Series 4 did. The Series SE, I guess, the SE came out in 2020, just right now, so... They both have the same dimensions when it comes out of the panel, and I'm pretty sure the displays are going to look exactly the same. Obviously, these are two different sizes, but pretty much you can get them in both the same sizes. In terms of the thinness factor, they're going to be exactly the same thinness for the same model. So this one, in this particular case, the 44 millimeter one, will be a little bit thicker than the 40 than the than the 40 standard millimeter one, but it's still totally okay. The backs are exactly the same on both. And they both have the crowns on the side as well as the power buttons, but everything else besides these are exactly the same. Now, a major thing between these for sure would definitely be, you know, I guess, you know, besides the outside. But before I go there is one more thing. They both have 50 meters of water resistance, so you can dip these both in water for, you know, for 50 minutes and still be totally okay, which is another huge asset for these. You want them to be a little bit rugged. You know, you're going to be using them around water. You're probably going to dip them in water by accident sometimes if you're washing your hands or you're swimming. They both have the same water resistance, which is really cool. Now, the Apple Watch SE does have the ECG certified, you know, the it is ECG certified, which is really cool. So if you're somebody who's more self-conscious than maybe the typical person, getting the Apple Watch SE may be a little bit better than getting the Apple Watch Series 4 for you specifically. But I still think for a majority of people, maybe getting the Series 4 is probably still okay for the majority of people out there. So in terms of that, that really pretty much covers it up in terms of the outside. Now hitting on this software longevity and just the software life cycle, you know, the Apple Watch Series 4, like I said, came out in 2018. It does have that Apple S4 chip inside of it. So this thing came out in 2018. The latest chipset is the Apple S6 chip. So keeping that in mind, this thing will probably get two years or less software support than the Apple Watch Series 6. But the Apple Watch SE over here does not have the Apple S6 chip, which is the latest one. It has the Apple S5 chip, which is the second to the latest one. That This one came out in 2019, technically. So there could be, you know, a specific situation where the Apple Watch SE technically, you know, only lasts one year more than the Apple Watch Series 4. But I do want to say one thing about that is that with the Apple Watch SE, I truly do think it's probably gonna get an extra year of software support eventually when that time comes. So with the Apple Watch SE, it's getting you know the next version, next version, or whatever. They're both on WatchOS 7, but eventually when the time comes, I'm pretty sure the Apple Watch SE is probably going to get an extra year software support. So it's probably going to end up matching with the Apple Watch Series 6. I don't have any proof to, you know, say that or I don't have any proof, whatever. But I noticed in the past, there were a couple times, I think the Apple Watch Series 1 and the Apple Watch Series 2 ended up getting the same amount of software version. So I could probably say that same thing here. Again, I don't have any insider knowledge. I don't know for 100% fact. But if I had to guess, that's probably what I would end up saying. So when it came down to the software lifecycle of both of these, the Apple Watch Series 4 is probably going to end up getting two years of less software than the Apple Watch SE. But I still think if you get both of these now, they're both going to be lasting for an extremely long amount of time. So it's not really even that big of a deal. So in terms of the software department, that pretty much covers it up. Now I'll go ahead and do a little bit of a speed test between both of these to see which one is the faster one. I'm pretty much going to say the Apple Watch SE is probably going to be the faster one, but I guess we can go and test that out. So it's going to take me 50 minutes to get everything set up. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I have all the watches right here, and I'm going to get everything up in the multitasking panel ready, and I'm swiping out of everything, so it could take an extra second or two. Okay, there we go. Let me go ahead and hop out of here. Now let's get into the app panel, and let me go and start loading up some of these apps. So let's get into something like the App Store. Three, two, one. 
and a little bit of glitchiness in the beginning with. I think the SC was a little bit faster there, but they both were very, very close. Scrolling through, they seem kind of the same. You know, there's not really a tremendous difference between them. Let me go and swipe up here and click here and see which one loads up faster. Surprisingly, the Series 4 actually loaded that one specific one up faster. And I am able to swipe out of both of them. Let's get into the screen one, three, two, one. And yeah, the Series 4, a little bit faster there, which is kind of surprising. Wasn't expecting to see that type of difference. We can go and get into music. Three, two, one. And of course, I messed it up. Let's do bedtime. Three, two, one. So it did kind of come up a lot faster on the SC. I'm not really too sure why that happened. Maybe it cached in the background or something. But I did clear out all the apps, which is weird. Let's do the calculator. Three, two, one. And they both were pretty close. I didn't really see a tremendous difference between them. If I can go and get in here, they're both probably going to be about the same. We can get into books, which I didn't even know there was a books app. That just seems kind of weird. Three, two, one. Does anybody read their books from their library on their phone? Watch. That's kind of strange, but whatever. Okay, that kind of covered that one up. We can go and get into something like alarms. Three, two, one. And I think the SE was probably faster there. We can go and get into this one, whichever it is. Three, two, one. Okay, very interesting. That pretty much covers up that one. Now let me go ahead and pull up some of these other ones and kind of get an idea if I can go all the way back up or back down for that matter. So let's go back into the App Store. Three, two, one. All right, I'm pretty sure they're both probably going to end up being around the same in that area. But I was pretty surprised, you know, I kind of saw that the Apple Watch SE maybe was faster sometimes, but in other times the Apple Series, Apple Watch Series 4 was a little bit faster. So I'm not really too sure what to make of it. I think obviously both these watches are very, very good. And there's really not one that overblows the other one in terms of performance. But there were some times where the Apple Watch SE was faster and there were some times where the Apple Watch Series 4 was faster. So I'm not really too sure. It's totally up to you. You guys can kind of get a better idea of how it was than I was. But I'll probably tell you, if you have the Apple Watch Series 4 performance-wise, you're probably not going to get that much better of a performance if you go from a Series 4 to the SE, and probably vice versa. So let's go and hit on the battery life, and I'll kind of sum up this comparison. The Apple Watch Series 4 has a 292 mAh battery, and the Apple Watch SE, as far as I know, is probably going to have around that same size battery too. I think both these things have pretty decent battery life and battery sizes. Now, it will probably matter more if you get the 40 millimeter one versus the 42, 44 millimeter one. So kind of keep that in mind. If you're expecting to get like the same amount of battery life on both, then you probably will, but I would ex I would recommend you to actually look into whether you want to get the bigger model or the smaller model. If you get the bigger model, you'll probably end up getting better battery life. If you get the smaller model, you might actually end up getting worse battery life just because of the size differences. So in terms of that, that really pretty much covers it up. And to kind of sum up this whole entire video and to answer the question, should you pick up the Apple Watch Series 4 or should you pick up the Apple Watch SE? I'll be honest, if you get a good price for either of these watches, I would say go for it. You know, $279 for the Apple Watch SE for the base model is a really good price to pay for it. It's a tremendous watch. It will definitely get the job done. It doesn't really get much better than this unless you want to go for the Series 6. But I still think if you have the Apple Watch Series 4, it's a tremendous watch too. There's really not a lot to hate on it. You know, it gets the job done. It's my personal watch. I use it every day. It feels really good. It performs really well. And like I said, there's just not a lot to hate on it at the end of the day. So... In terms of everything and in terms of both these, that pretty much covers it up. If you guys have any other questions, if you want to pick these up either, like I said before, links are down in the description. Hit the like button if you guys enjoy the video, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also, check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.